guys, it's Erin and Jenny with Revisions Mentor. Once again, we are back. So we are answering your questions again, and we get asked all the time, what do you guys take with you on installation day? We have a toolkit, actually several toolkits, that mm -hmm. go with us for every job that we do. And um, we have provided that information for you guys in writing. It's a freebie that we give away. So mm -hmm. um, you're welcome to it. But today we're gonna just go over the actual physical items in there mm -hmm. and kind of talk about how that works. And how, yep, and why we use these items. And guys, if you'll click on the link below, um, we will send you a copy of our tool toolkit so you don't have to write any of this stuff down but I think that you'll find this stuff is useful. And if there's anything that we're missing on our list, please leave it in the comments below because we are listening and we are always looking for ways to save time and preserve our furnishings and mm. be really efficient on move-in day. Good so, idea. Yeah. Good idea, yeah. Tell us what you use, what we're missing. We, we, love, we love the help. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, first and foremost, I mean, it's the obvious stuff, right? The hammers and the nails and the um, hanging apparatuses. Yes. Um, we use several different types of nails. We use the little tiny ones for the lightweight um, pieces and we use the heavy hanging hooks for heavier mirrors and things of that nature that kind of keep you from damaging drywall. It's important to always get permission before you start hanging stuff on the walls from the homeowner. Do we have permission to hang? Because sometimes when it's a brand new build, um, builders are not as uptight about it, but a lot of times homeowners are they've just done big renovations so definitely check um, before you put holes in anybody's drywall check for that make sure you have a variety of, of, of hanging weight uh, capacities on your hooks we tend to go for the lightest weight artwork that we can find because it's easiest to work with mm -hmm. but some of our some of our really nice artwork is very very heavy so we've got a variety of things and then the other thing that we run into on occasion in a lot of homes in the historic district that we work in, is plaster walls. Plaster. And that's a whole nother tricky situation. You wanna be really careful and mindful about the types of hanging things that you're using. Um, we, have, we have tried and sometimes we also use the, um, what are those Velcro things called, Erin? Yeah, those adhesive. These guys, command strips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Use command strips. You have to be mindful when you use these though, especially on fresh paint. If the paint is new and it hasn't really adhered to the wall, um, they will. this will fall and it will rip the paint off. So this is something to be mindful about. They're good for really- Lesson they, learned. <laughs> we've done that a couple of times. I did that. <laughs> it's fine, you patch it up and nobody knows any different. Um, but definitely uh, use these for lightweight pieces. I wouldn't use them to hang heavy objects. We haven't had, um, we have had things fall off the walls, but they are really good for, you know, your lighter weight things, your bathroom accessories and things like that that aren't so heavy art, bathroom art. We're not hanging accessories on the wall, but you know what I mean. Yep. And um, since we're on it, um, we also usually bring with us a stud finder to make sure that we're anchoring into you know, solid parts of the wall. Um, that said, it's not so important for the lighter weight pieces. Right. We do a lot of um, eyeballing of our, mm -hmm. our hanging, mm -hmm. and um, and that works really well for us. That may or may not work for you, but um, that works great for us. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah. Yep. All right, um, let's see, what's next on our toolkit list? Super glue, Gorilla Glue, we always have that. Yeah, you never know when you're gonna drop a lamp and have to replace or repair a piece of porcelain or- It's a, always a lamp. It's always, it's always a lamp. <laughs> it's always a lamp. <laughs> or an accessory yeah. that's like stuffed into a, a bin mm -hmm. and it's a little bit too heavy, so we'll use, we'll always keep this on hand uh, to repair things as they get broken mm -hmm. occasionally. Wood glue too we have, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's sometimes a chunk out of the leg of a table or mm -hmm. the corner of a coffee table. It happens when the guys are moving the inventory. Yeah. Um, that glue comes in handy for all kinds of stuff. It does. And sometimes you might want to bring painter's tape because you can kind of hold it in place while the glue is drying while you're finishing up your staging project and then pull your tape off on the way out the door. Yep. So. Box cutters, box cutters. Yes. That's um, usually the moving guys have those, but um, we need them as well. And it's it's for stuff like rugs that are wrapped in plastic and new artwork that's still encased in that heavy cardboard. Mm -hmm. um, box cutters and then um, along those lines, scissors. We always have mm -hmm. several pairs of scissors 
heavy oh, yeah. duty scissors for cutting rug pads. Yes, and we use we spend a tremendous amount of time cutting tags off of items, especially when they're new and they kit just came from, you know, we did a home goods run or Kirkland's run and we have to spend some time cutting tags off. So usually we'll hand the, the scissors to our assistant and just say, go cut the tags off of everything you see, just yeah. so they're not on there. Yeah. Um, so that's a good thing to keep keep around. Um, I think our last job, we everybody had a pair of scissors in their oh, yeah. in their pockets. Yeah. And so everybody, every time they saw a tag, they were just <laughs> trimming. Yeah, that was also trimming. like a five-story beach house installation. Yeah. So we had staff on each floor and we wanted to make sure everybody was prepared so we, we weren't doing a whole lot of like running up and down the stairs. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of running. Yeah. Um, tape time. measure. Tape measure. Green Bay Packer tape measure if you happen to be from the Midwest. <laughs> 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 or a yeah. football fan. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and I am neither. So I, it, to me, I, any any tape measure will do, but this has been a great one for us. It's kind of, <laughs> kind of wonky at the moment. It doesn't close, but it's fine. Yeah, uh, yeah you always want to measure before you bring your pieces in, um, preferably on your first site visit to make sure, you know, you can, you can accommodate the size rugs that you have available. Um, you know, entryway pieces, you want to measure them to make sure that it's not too wide, that it doesn't encroach on your, your walking space. Mm -hmm. you know, measuring for sofas, measuring for everything, um, just to get a ballpark understanding of what's going to fit in that space. Yeah, and um, another um, you know aha moment for us on our on our installation job last week was realizing that the sofa that we brought, or the I'm sorry, not the sofa, the uh, dresser that we brought for the top floor was not going to fit up the stairwell. Yeah, um, and uh, you yep. know, but yeah, we were, we had to bring in a crane to lift the piece of furniture up onto the top floor. So uh, these are things that you need to be prepared for, especially if you're doing these super tall beach houses. So always take your measurements, always be um, super prepared, especially if you have tight stairwells. Sometimes sofas don't fit up the stairwells. They have to go over the balcony and into the sliding glass door. Um, and that's happened for us on a number of occasions. So make sure that you have qualified movers who know what they're doing, who, who can you know make these sorts of decisions and um, talk to them ahead of time because if you got to bring in a crane that's an added expense they are around they're available and uh but you don't want to be caught unprepared so. yeah all right next item on our toolkit uh, rubber bands zip ties electrical tape um these things come in handy for just about everything um yeah. One of the things we use the, this for a lot is tying up cords, loose cords on mm -hmm. lamps, you know, kind of make them look clean and orderly. Mm -hmm. um, electrical tape works to hide a myriad of sins. <laughs> it does. Yeah, sometimes like if you have to run like a cord along a, a, a leg of a table to kind of hide it so it's not showing up in pictures, that sort of thing, use little pieces, little pieces of tape like that. Um, zip ties to tighten it all together. Kind of like we did with this trusty extension cord that we'll get to oh, yeah. shortly. That keeps us organized. Yeah, yeah, keeps it organized for sure. Yeah. Um, um, next up is a sewing kit. And interestingly enough, we've never needed to use it. No. Knock on wood. Right here somewhere. Yeah. Um, yeah, sewing kits, uh, we haven't had to use them on a job site, but we I've been known to stitch a pillow or two when mm. we get home. So yeah. I'm thinking of the pillow that I have sitting back there right now. Like it's kind of, the, the oh. hem is coming out. Yeah. It needs to be redone. Yeah. It kind of just happens when you buy them in big, big quantities. So yeah. um, sewing kit's great. It's helpful. Sewing kit's good. Next up, um, Allen wrenches, adjustable wrenches, pliers, screwdrivers, just a bunch of tools without, without fail. Um, we usually end up in a situation where we have to take the base off a table to get it into the door mm -hmm. or, um, you know, we have to take apart a headboard to, you know, fit it up the stairs. So um, having a full, you know, typical repertoire of tools yeah. is important. Yeah, we yeah. bring the full toolkit that has all of those extra pieces just to be extra prepared. I mean, sometimes it's a bit overkill, but yeah, I'd rather have it. Yeah. Don't have to go back out to a job site, especially if it's like an hour away. You know, yeah. Just be prepared. Yes. Definitely better safe than sorry. Mm -hmm. um, a level, Erin. Yeah. There's actually not one in this kit, but we highly recommend that that be in your actual mm -hmm. toolkit. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good idea. That's a good one. Especially if you're not great at eyeballing, you're hanging. Mm -hmm. um, we don't really use levels for most of our jobs because we've just gotten really uh, concise at, at, at kind of eyeballing things and getting them right. But it's a nice, it's a nice piece to have. Um, and you don't need a huge one. You can get one of those little ones. We actually have one. It's mm -hmm. just not, not the kid at the right at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, 
we talked about nails and screws hanging wire hanging wire is is nice to have um mm -hmm. as well um you want to get heavyweight hanging wire this is um not as heavy as it could be and what we found is if it's not strong enough um even if you wrap and wrap and wrap and wrap on the ends um it can start to unravel if it's too much weight so yeah. um, get heavy hanging wire um or get really, really good at hanging. You're like we do a lot of work with canvases that have the two hooks on each end, and we've gotten really good at hanging those with two nails or two hooks, depending on how heavy they are. Yeah. Um, and don't, don't have to use the hanging wire, but definitely prepare ahead of time. If you do have art that requires hanging wire, get the heavy stuff. Mm -hmm. Don't want it to like slide down when nobody's looking and hit the ground. Yeah. 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 All right, and then moving on to oh, this stuff is really important. I've got I've got the checklist that we're gonna give we're you reading the over here. We're reading it. Um, furniture blankets. We Critical. need furniture blankets all the time. Critical. The nice heavy ones that um, that your movers will bring. And if you're doing your own moving, you've got to invest in some furniture blankets. Yeah, I mean they're even important for storage. I mean mm -hmm. you just use them to. Actually, one of our um, viewers made a really good point and said using furniture blankets to put underneath heavy furniture to slide it. That's really smart. Yeah. We've actually used the, the felt pads that you slide underneath the feet of the furniture, and that's helpful. But a furniture blanket's great. That mm -hmm. way you're not going to scratch floors either. So yep. really smart. Thanks for the contribution. That padded stuff is good for your, uh, for your hard furniture. And then we use lighter weight. Like we have old sheets that you know we wash and recycle between jobs just to throw over um, sofas to protect from you know sweaty movers um, dust or dirt that might be in the moving truck uh, <laughs> I think you said sweaty movers like four times in the last three videos is that that's weird sweaty movers. <laughs> should we edit that out it's I don't know it's been a hot summer <laughs> it's been a very hot summer in North lots Carolina lots of sweaty movers lots of sweaty movers <laughs> But it's a real thing. Ooh. It's a real thing that we encounter. True. So um, <laughs> use extra um, old sheets. You can even collect them from uh, thrift shops. Old sheets, old shower curtains. Mm -hmm. All of this stuff is good for layering between between your furniture items. Um, along that line, if you're moving your own furniture and not working with a furniture company, you also want to have a furniture dolly and you want to have a, a wide selection of uh, straps. Yeah. to anchor things in Tie your truck. Yes, yeah. we um, we learned the hard way that bungee cords are not a great solution for tying items if you're using an open back truck. Um, so buy the straps, it's worth it. They really don't cost that anymore or much more, but when you can actually like crank it and tie down your, your materials, then they're not going to fly out of the back of your truck while going 55 miles an hour down the highway <laughs> and most in most cases almost always actually that was a, a furniture pickup that we did that day but in most cases we're using an enclosed box truck and um, the bungee cords do work a little bit better in there but honestly even on the occasions that we felt like we only have a few miles to go to get the inventory where we're going use it still the shifts use, use the straps use the straps yeah, use the straps. yeah. trust me um, All right. A step ladder. Step ladders are helpful if you need to hang things. Jenny and I are fairly tall, so we don't have to use them often. But occasionally, you know, if you have to hang a big piece that's kind of heavy over a, a large piece of furniture, you might want to have a step ladder handy. Um, everybody's kind of different in that way, but we've been fortunate to not have to use them a lot. We have had that's hands because Erin right? lets me climb on her shoulders, <laughs> like cheerleaders, you know. <laughs> be awesome that's never happened but we make a video <laughs> okay um a steamer steamer this is really great for um making things look really crisp and fresh taking the wrinkles out of stuff taking the wrinkles out of your bed skirts drapery if you're doing drapery which we don't typically do for staging gigs but occasionally they want them if a model home for a builder wants drapery Steamers are essential. A lot of our um, furniture is slip covered, so it has a bit of like skirting around the bottom. We steam it just to make it look really tight and uh, really neat and put together. Make sure you have an extension cord for your steamer. Um, those cords on the on the actual steamer are never longer than a couple of feet. You need a big extension cord so that you can stretch it across the room and get all the way around the bed, all the way across the living room. Yep, very smart. All right. Oh, the poster putty. Yeah, poster putty. So I'm a huge fan of this stuff. 
because when we hang art, and this is another thing that you don't want to put on very fresh paint because it can pull the paint off. But when we hang art, um, especially if we're hanging on one center nail and we want it, we don't want it to get wonky if a door slams or something like that. We put little pieces of tacky putty on the back, the lower corners of the art so that it doesn't shift. And we put it, we, and then we mount it to the wall, which is the nail and then two pieces of putty. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't turn. And if you live in a place like California where you have like earthquakes, this might be pretty important yeah. for making sure that your art stays straight on the walls when you're not there for yeah. you know, several weeks. That's that's definitely a good peace of mind for us. When we leave the, the stage job, it's it's perfect, it's impeccable, mm -hmm. but we have you know no idea unless we go back two days later what's right. what's transpired. Right. You know, right. and so, especially if it's yeah. a model home and it's sitting there for a year or more, and you have a lot of realtors coming in and out, and they have realtor events, and they have open houses, and they have all these things happening. If doors are slammed or somebody bumps it, you know, you have a gallery wall and you have a wonky piece, kind of just reflects poorly on you. So yeah. we make sure to use this um, poster tacky stuff yeah so we mentioned parts on there and I think um, one of the things that we're thinking about like oftentimes you know we're disassembling lamps so the um what do you call that part that goes at the top of the lamp this guy, Aaron? This guy the um the part with that holds the finial and holds in we usually have an extra one or two of those in our kit this metal frame here yeah. um in case we you know are missing uh, missing one um, parts like if you need specific parts for a table that's been in your warehouse disassembled make sure you know what we often do is tape the bag of parts mm -hmm. to the underside of the table mm -hmm. hardware um, yeah you want to make sure you've got all the pieces yeah to everything that might be disassembled um, when you go you don't want surprises mm -hmm. no surprises on move-in day that's right um, furniture, paint pens, wax, crayons, um, yeah. markers, stain pens, mm -hmm. all very valuable for Pretty handling cool. necks and bumps. Yep. yep. Making, keeping your furniture looking really fresh and new. And you know, once in a while we'll kind of do an inventory, inventory check and we'll do these little repairs and make sure that our stuff is in tip top condition. But sometimes when you get to a job site, you know, a table might get banged a little bit on the truck and you want to touch it up so it's good to have this is you know like a five dollar kit you know and it mm -hmm. just saves your furniture from looking beat up and ragged yep super yeah. handy yeah um sharpies we've used, <laughs> we've used sharpies to touch up furniture we as have. well <laughs> not <laughs> red but, uh. but yeah sharpies are good they're helpful um you just never know you never know if you might need to label something. Sometimes if you're doing an accessories package in an occupied um, home and you're bringing in your accessories and mixing it with the, the homeowner's accessories, it's not a terrible idea to put your initial or something on the bottom of your pieces. Um, so if there's any question, you know, what's yours. And um, then along the lines of the Sharpies um, post-its, we yes. just used those in our last job um, to, to mark rooms and doors so that it was a four floor job, like Erin mentioned. Um, and we had a crew of people running up and down um, stairs and elevators, so everybody knew where to go because we had rooms rooms labeled and boxes marked. Yeah, we would um, we would label each, you know, bedroom one, bedroom two, bedroom three, master, living room, da da da, and we would put that on the door. And then when somebody would come off the truck, especially for a huge job like this, we had somebody at the on the ground with the movers and a checklist, and they'd say, Bedroom one, check. Bedroom two, check. And then they knew, okay, I need to go look for the post in that. Yeah. So it helps. Keep everybody organized. Keep everybody organized. Um, oh, here's a good one. Um, trash bags for oh, yes. your, oh my goodness. We use trash bags. These are the big heavy duty ones. Yeah. Um, we use them for pillows and bedding and pillows and bedding and pillows and bedding. <laughs> yes, to protect all of your things. Also, if you're bringing in a lot of new stuff, um, we make sure that we take all the trash with us when we leave. So trash bags are really important. You know, things get broken. Think, you know, you're unwrapping things. You're unwrapping rugs, maybe brand new out of the package. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we've recently really kind of uh, explored more of our Airbnb design services. So we're bringing in pieces that stay in the house. So it's a lot of brand new stuff, comes with a lot of packaging, and we don't want to leave that for the homeowner to have to deal with. So we take the trash bags with us to pack it up. Yeah. Take it out. Yeah. yeah. And speaking of cleaning, um, that's a whole nother uh, can of worms, but you want to have 
a glass cleaner, you want to have an all-purpose cleaner, you want to have goo gone to get the stickers off of uh, new stuff that you've bought. Um, rubbing alcohol is a nice solvent to have. Mm -hmm. um, cleaning rags, paper towels, yes. um, all of the stuff that you would have in your own home. Mm -hmm. You want a nice solid cleaning uh, kit that also includes um, a broom and a dustpan, mm -hmm. um, perhaps a little hand vac. We've been known to take an actual vacuum cleaner. Oh, and this is Aaron's favorite. Magic eraser. Magic eraser. They're amazing. They're so amazing. I love these things. <laughs> I use them all the time. All the time. Yeah. Uh, they, they don't, they're not, we, we, we use them a lot on um, uh, eggshell finished paint. Sometimes it's left a mark on, on flat paint. So be careful if you're using on flat, but we've, we've had great experiences with these. They get all of the, all of the, the fingerprints off of things and, so that's really helpful. Another thing to get uh, if your upholstery gets dirty in transit, we'll do a mix of like Blue Dawn and um, vinegar and a clean towel and scrub to get, you know, scuff marks or dirt off of your upholstery. And yeah. That doesn't, that's never caused any damage to our stuff. So yeah, that's a good solution. Yeah. And um, we also have Clorox pens mm -hmm. for our white slip covers. Uh, and we also have just the um, stain remover uh, pens mm -hmm. um, to, you know, kind of tackle any, any weird things that we run into. Yeah. Um, along the lines of cleaning. Also, we should mention the lint roller I see here, Erin. Oh, yeah. Lint rollers are great. Lint for, like, rollers. Hairs and stuff. Fuzz. Fuzz. It sticks to your... Weird, weird, weird stuff here. Like that. that. You, you, off your you never know what's on there. That's right. Um, let's talk about some of the personal items that we need to bring. Um, and probably the most important. You're going to thank us for this yes. one. Tell them. Toilet paper. <laughs> That's the toilet bring paper. toilet paper. Because you just never know. It like Most of the time, there isn't any there. If it's new construction. All the time. There happens. isn't any toilet paper there. <laughs> And, you know, if people, if it's been a vacant house for a long period of time, mm -hmm. you're going to be there for several hours. Bring the toilet paper. Bring the toilet paper. That's a good idea. Bring yourself some, uh, some hand soap yeah. so that if you get dirty carrying boxes, you can wash your hands before you start uh, handling your soft inventory. Mm -hmm. Bring your hand sanitizer um, in times of COVID. Yep. Um, other personal items. <laughs> your uh, water bottle. Water bottles. Your snacks. Snacks. And your phone charger. Phone charger, yep. yes. Because you might be on a job site all day and mm -hmm. you've got to stay fueled. Yes. Keep moving all that furniture. Yep. That's right. A couple other good things. I hadn't, I've had forgotten about this. Um, mm -hmm. Band-aids. Another personal item to have. Um, yeah. <clears throat> if you get cut and you bleed on your upholstery, you're mm -hmm. not doing yourself any favors. So yep. make a little first aid kit. You know, some Band-aids, some Neosporin. Yeah. yeah, good to have. Yes. Um, also, make sure if you are a, um, make sure that you have the camera equipment that you need. If you do your photos from your phone, fine, you'll have that with you. If you're not, make sure that your camera and your kit, your tripod, any of that stuff is part of your um, toolkit as well. Yeah. A couple of other things that you want to have on your move in day in your toolkit are light bulbs. And make sure that if you're using pairs of lamps that you're using the same wattage and the same color light bulbs in both lamps because sometimes it'll show up in photos if one is more yellow and one is more white it doesn't photograph well so um light bulbs are the same watts overpack same color. overpack on light bulbs overpack yeah overpack on light bulbs <laughs> that's right um marketing materials guys you want to have your marketing materials that you can lay out so that once your gorgeous staging is done and people are looking at your 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 staging work that they can take business cards with them and we actually have uh postcards that we share with our realtors i can show it to you i can edit this part out we have business cards that we use we have marketing materials that we leave out for our uh for our realtors and for homeowners when people do walkthroughs so things like this you can have them made we have them made at local print shops and it has our contact information on the back and we also use them as thank you cards after we've been hired for a staging job. We send them a postcard that says thank you for your business. And it's just kind of a way to stay on their radar, keep them thinking about us for the next job. We also have larger handouts. We have full page handouts that give a little bit more information about the services that we offer. We usually leave those by the front door in the foyer. And then we use uh, postcards that we put in pretty frames. So you'll usually find a framed postcard advertising who in the kitchen, in the living room, usually one in the foyer. Yep. We put three or four mm -hmm. per job so that people can see 
your name a couple of times as they're walking through the space. Absolutely. And of course, your post, I mean, your business cards. Leave your business cards out. People take them with them, but that's a good thing to keep out as well. So I think that's all the stuff in our toolkit checklist. Yes. Have we covered it all? Think so. Leave us a comment if we missed something. Subscribe if you're not already following us. We do new videos twice a week.